The fire at the crash site of Flight 3407 continues to burn, preventing investigators from examining the wreckage. Right in there, that's where I think the, the box The airplane are. had crashed into a house and then it had burned all night long, so all the debris was basically in the house. Our concern is that we're losing evidence. It's perishable, and if we can't get in there and get the fire out, then we're not able to uh, maybe get a hold of evidence that might help us during the investigation. Clint Crookshanks urgently needs to recover the black box flight recorders, which could contain valuable clues about the accident. That's good. We knew that the, uh, the recorders were in the tail part of the airplane. Ordinarily, investigators don't go near a crash site that's still burning. But if the black boxes can't be rescued, they may never find out what brought down Flight 3407. We started looking around and, and poking around into the wreckage and actually found out where they were. OK, whoa, whoa, it's probably in here, OK? The access panel's on the other side, so we're going to have to cut a hole right there, OK? The fire department produced a, uh, a chop saw. We were able to cut a hole in the side of the fuselage and go in and grab the recorders and pull them out. All right, I should do it. <sighs> to the immense relief of all, the recorders are undamaged. Once we took the recorders out of the airplane, we put them on the jet and they were flown back to Washington, D.C. to our headquarters. Now, investigators are faced with a new hurdle. What little is left of the aircraft is hopelessly jumbled together with human remains and debris from the house. It all burned and settled into the basement, so we had probably 10 feet of debris that we had to dig through in order to recover all of the, the airplane. Authorities wonder how they can salvage any useful evidence from this chaos. They get invaluable assistance from an unusual source. A group of students learning to process crime scenes is enlisted to separate human remains from the rest of the debris. They were graduate students from a local college, forensic anthropology students, and this was good experience for them to come dig through wreckage like this and look for human remains. So uh, landing gear over there, please. Thank you. It's dirty, painstaking work, but it frees up investigators to concentrate on the aircraft ruins. So we were on our hands and knees with brooms, with little shovels, scooping out debris, identifying it as to house debris or airplane debris, and then putting it in different piles. The first question for me as a structures engineer is to figure out if the whole airplane made it to the scene of the crash. The wreckage is carefully studied to determine if the plane's four corners, nose, tail, and both wingtips, are present. If we find all four corners of the airplane, then we know that there was uh, no in-flight breakup. There was nothing that departed the airplane during the flight that may have caused the accident. One wing has been consumed by fire. The other is shattered into pieces. Hey, have a look at this. But investigators are gradually finding what they've been searching for. Oh, yeah, it's the last piece. It's the left one. It wasn't until several days into the investigation, as we were scraping away some of the debris, that we actually found evidence of the left wing and the nose. Investigators now have all the pieces they need to conclude that the entire plane is at the crash site. Whatever caused the disaster was not the result of a breakup in flight. 